Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video not only am I going to be showing you how to turn the February 2021 sheet load of cards into a clear card, I'm also going to be using pattern papers from different lines and I almost never do that. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll consider clicking on that subscribe button below and maybe even ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I've been trying the past few months to stop by and show you how to turn the latest sheet load of cards into a clear card. In the past, you've seen me make many clear cards here on my channel. I have done a Q&A video telling you more about what I use, and I will link that video in the description box below. But why I'm doing this is I figure that I inspired a lot of you to buy that clear card stock, and I want to show you different ways to use it. Make sure that if you haven't already downloaded the February 2021 sheet load of cards that you check out the video that gives you the instructions. That video, which I call the debut, and the video from the second of the month, which I tell you how or I show you how I make them, is linked in that description box below. What I'll go over today are just some of the thoughts I have in my mind when I turn the sketch into a clear card because with this clear card stock, some elements can go on the inside and some elements can go on the front. If you're interested in seeing more of my clear cards, I do have a clear card playlist. I will make sure once again to link that in the description box below, but let me go ahead and tell you now about some of the products that I'll be using in today's video. As always, once I start the voiceover, if I add anything else, I will be sure to let you know. If I leave you with any questions, you can leave those in the comment section and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Did you see how I totally tried to ignore my cat walking through the frame? That's Lyndon. She's the one that always shows up. To make today's cards, you'll of course need that free printable that I provide to my subscribers. It's a two-page PDF and it gives you all of the supplies you need as well as the cutting guides. For my sentiment today, I'll be using this Bow Bunny set. I am probably going to be using the Thank You. I've been needing a lot of those cards lately. And I did already make most of my clear card bases, but I will show you later on in the video how I cut and fold one of these. Now in my description box below is a link to my preferred clear card stock as well as some alternatives. I do want to let you know that you probably can't get my preferred card stock right now. It has been out for quite a few months, but there again are some alternatives linked and that is going to get you through just fine as long as you go for that 10 mil. That's nice and thick and will stand up on its own. The only real difference is the one that I usually buy comes with tissues between each of the clear sheets. I just think maybe it helps a little bit with the scratching, but I think you'll be fine buying whatever they have available. And like I mentioned before, the pattern papers that I chose today for my cards are not from the same paper line. I am not sure the last time I have done this, I really like to make sure that my pattern papers are going to go together, but I decided today that I would kind of do a little challenge for myself because I had a piece of paper that I love and wanted to use and kind of explain to you how I choose the pattern papers that I do. The pattern paper that grabbed my attention today and screamed, use me on your cards, was this sheet that I got at Hobby Lobby. I love the florals and then if you can see there are some gold foiling on there also. Now normally with the Hobby Lobby single sheets they're pretty thin just like regular printer paper maybe a little bit heavier but this one is a great weight. Now since the background was white and there were those gold foiled pieces for one of my other patterns I decided to go with this sheet. You can see there that those diagonal dotted stripes are gold foiled. This is actually the back side of another piece of paper and this is from Stampin' Up. 
And finally, when I choose my pattern papers, I try to go with one bold pattern and then two different ones that somehow tie into that main one. So what I did is I found a sheet of pattern paper that had a color from that main one that has a smaller pattern in it. And luckily I had this sheet which was perfect. And this is from Dear Lizzie's She's Magic line. I picked this up at Joann. Also today I will be bringing in quite a bit of white cardstock. I'll talk about that later on. But I will be using that for the inner card for my clear cards as well as my mats. Let's get crafty! I started off today's cards by cutting the pattern paper per the instructions. Now I have already done this in my process video, so once again, if you want to see the details on how that's done, I will link that in the description box below. Another thing that I did off camera was round the designated corners on two of the pieces, and I just did this with my We Are Memory Keepers Corner Chomper. I used that quarter inch side. Now I'll show you how I cut a piece of the clear cardstock. This really cuts just like any other cardstock. I'm going to slice it in half to four and a quarter inches wide. On the first one, I use the side of my trimmer to help me fold it. And on the second one, I just use my fingers and I always do enforce that fold with my bone folder, but it's not necessary. For today's clear card, I'm going to be creating a small inner card that's the same size as the piece of cardstock with the two rounded edges. So what I'll do to create that card is measure this, which is three and a quarter inches wide by four and a half inches tall when it's folded. So I'll be cutting CS1 into pieces that are six and a half inches wide by four and a half inches tall. Now I know I just held up six fingers there recently. I wasn't thinking for some reason I thought I was making 12 cards, but I'm only making nine. So what I did was cut two strips of cardstock that were four and a half inches tall, and then I turned those and cut them down to six and a half inches wide. Now this is the only downfall of my cutter. The six and a half inch mark is cut off. So I just scooted those over to the two inch mark on the left and then folded each one of those. You'll see here that once they're inside the clear card base, it will just open to the left. It's kind of fun to have the card open two ways. I did round the corners on this piece as well with that same corner rounder, just following again the sketch on the sheet load of cards. I continued cutting and folding the white cardstock until I had nine little inner cards. Now I did discover it was a little bit easier to cut the cardstock to six and a half inches wide first and then cut it into two four and a half inch tall strips. I just thought this saved a little bit of cutting. Now, while I'm doing that, I do want to remind you that if you are watching this video before March 14th, 2021, that I do have a giveaway going called Share the Love. And in honor of hitting my 15,000 subscriber, I'm going to be giving away six, possibly seven, $25 gift cards. I will link the video below that gives you all of the details. This would normally be when I would cut the rectangles for the sentiment, but because I already have so many two inch scraps left over, I'll just be using these. You might also notice that I am not cutting any pieces for that little fishtail banner. And later on in the video, I'll be doing something different so you'll find out why. The next step was putting together my little card kits. This is just when I go through and I pair up or triple up the pattern papers. I do explain this more in depth in that first process video. Now that all of the pieces are cut and folded, I can start putting the cards together. The middle pattern paper piece or piece B is gonna get adhesive put on the back and then it gets put on the front of that little inner card I made. Don't forget that this pattern paper will be aligned all the way to the left. Then I put adhesive on the smallest piece or piece C and this got placed at the bottom of that piece I just placed. That's why you only have to round one corner on piece C, just that one at the bottom. Now I'm going to set that to the side for now and just continue to put these little cards together. You'll notice my cat has decided to make a couple appearances. 
Now, if you didn't watch Craft Roulette from Friday night yet, and you want to see more of my cat than you really probably ever want to see, I hope you'll check it out. I will have it linked in the description box below. Lyndon did make kind of an obscene entry, but it's pretty funny too. I brought back in those clear card bases and now I'm going to start adhering the pattern paper to that. The first thing I did was add adhesive to the back of the largest piece of pattern paper or A and this gets placed centered on the inside of the card base. With this clear cardstock, it does like to grab a hold of that adhesive once it touches it, so always make sure that you're ready to really put that paper down before you press it. Next, I added adhesive to the back of the inner card, and this got once again aligned to the left, centered top to bottom on the large piece of pattern paper. I continued this same process until I had all nine cards put together. Now it is time to get my sentiment stamped. Originally the sentiment called for a two inch by two and a half inch tall piece, but because I'm gonna be putting a strip of pattern paper at the bottom of each of these, I did go ahead and cut it to two and a half inches wide by two and three quarters inches tall. I thought this would be a great way to use up some of those leftover pattern paper scraps. Now because these are all pretty little pieces, I did bring in my Fisker's little photo trimmer to cut these down. This is just handier for small things like this. Once I had all of the cardstock pieces cut, I then cut down all of those pattern paper strips until I had three of each that were two inches wide. I did end up cutting four from the floral strip and that is just because that very first one only had pink on it and I just wanted a wider variety of colors for my card. Now I'm going to be stamping the sentiment. I did bring in my Misty so I can just set the stamp up once and then just stamp it nine times. I will be stamping with Versamark ink and embossing with detail gold embossing powder. I set up the stamp so it was centered toward the top of that piece. Remember I'll be putting some pattern paper scraps at the bottom. So once that was in place, I picked it up with the door of my Misty and before I ink it up, I did run that embossing buddy over the cardstock just to help with the embossing powder, and then I stamped it onto the piece. There was a small stray dot of embossing powder once I poured the powder on, but I was just able to just move that off with my fingernail. Now I set this to the side because I'm going to stamp and pour the powder on all of these before I bring in my heat tool. And you'll notice I did set it way to the side there in front of me where I couldn't touch it just to make sure I didn't accidentally smudge it. Once those were all stamped and powdered, I did bring in my heat tool and heat set that powder. I do always warm it up for about 30 seconds off camera, and then when I bring it into my cardstock, I bring it to the back first, heat it up most of the way, and then bring it to the front to finish that. I think this just helps a little bit with the warping. While I add the little pieces of pattern paper to the bottom of the sentiment, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. I've just loved getting to know each of you better. Today's question is, what do you do with your pattern paper scraps or even cardstock scraps? Do you organize them? Do you use them right away? Do you recycle them or other? I'm always looking for great tips on stuff like this. So make sure to leave your answer in the comment section below and don't forget to add that hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered the question and want me to see your response. If you were wondering what I'm gonna do in place of the fishtail banner, now is the time that you're going to find out. I decided that I would bring in this little leaf die and some scraps of green cardstock that match the pattern paper, and I'm gonna cut one of those for each of the cards. I just thought this was a fun way to add something different and just show you that sheet load is always a jumping off point. You are free to alter the sketch, alter the embellishments, the pieces, the size, the shape, any way you want. I just like to help you get started. Mm -hmm. 
because these die cuts are pretty intricate, I did bring in my art glitter glue with that fine tip point and I added just a little bit toward the bottom of the leaves because most of it is gonna hang off to the right edge of that sentiment piece. So once I had that on there, I did just kind of sit it to the side and then I continued to do this same for all of the sentiments. I did let these dry for about five minutes before I moved on to the next step. Once those had dried, I then brought back in my cards and I'm gonna place the sentiments onto the card front. I chose the sentiment that had the matching pattern paper from the back of the inside to place on the front. The main part got adhered down with my ATG or the tape runner and it went in pretty much the same spot as shown on the sketch. Now those leaves, they could get caught on something so I decided that I wanted to tack those down so I brought back in that art glitter glue and I put a small dot of adhesive behind two of the leaves. I did hold those in place for about 10 seconds each with my finger and then set those to the side to dry with a stamp block on top. Once again about five minutes and I was ready to finalize these cards. This would normally be the time in the video where I add a little bling to my cards, but because I do have some shine with the gold foiling on the paper and the gold from the sentiment, I just brought in my white gel pen and added some highlights to the leaves. I tried to stay on either the top or the right side of each of the leaves, and I just like the little added dimension this gives to these die cuts. Here's a look at the two different ones side by side so you can see the difference. I continued to add these highlights to all of the leaf die cuts and here's a look at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made today's set of clear cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.